So I want to welcome everybody to the January Network and Learn for the UDLIRN. This one is a, is a little unique. This is our January shout out to kind of give everybody uh, uh, kind of what we're up to and what we've been doing and working hard in the UDLIRN labs to, to bring you the biggest and the best and the brightest. So with that, <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen and uh, jump into the, to the PowerPoint and show you kind of what we got going on today. Tonight, I have some wonderful people with me. Um, mostly UDL IRN uh, uh, board members, but also one very, very special guest of honor. Um, so, uh, and you hear him laughing in the back. Uh, but I wanted to welcome you again. Uh, we're just going to update you on some of the things that are happening tonight. Remember, please, uh, to tweet any kind of messages or, or uh, comments or check us out on social media using the hashtag UDL IRN or following us on Twitter at UDL IRN. Um, tonight's panelists, as I said before, Sue Harden, Sue, there she is. I'm gonna let them introduce, introduce themselves and tell you what their positions are in just a moment, but we have Sue Harden, we have Steve Nordmark, we have Brian Wojcik, uh, we have Jamie Basham, and we have, as I said, our guest of honor, our very special guest, uh, just for you folks out there in UDL world, the legendary, the effervescent, the very powerful Skip Stahl, the Skip. Two thumbs up. I am, of course, Brian Dean, uh, and I am happy to be here moderating again tonight. Uh, typically, what we do with our network and learns is we have two parts, and we have some audience uh, interaction. But tonight, because we just want to give you the straight dope and uh, uh, highlights of what we've been doing, we're not taking any audience participation. But tonight's plan, we're going to be looking at the summit. Uh, upcoming summit uh, that Sue Harden has uh, put together. It's going to be amazing, just as it is every year, but she's going to share some of the highlights with that. Um, we're going to talk about, uh, we'll have Jamie and, and Skip talk about the CAS UDL IRN um, uh, partnership and what, what's coming out of that. It will blow your mind. And then part three, we're going to talk about UDL credentialing and the certification platform that has been, uh, that Brian Wojcik and Steve Nordmark and, and a lot of other people have been putting a ton of work into. So without further ado, I just want to jump into the conversation with Sue and start talking a little bit, maybe I'm going to stop sharing the screen, start talking a little bit about the summit. Sue, why don't you tell us who you are first and, uh, and then we can talk about the summit. All right. Well, thanks, Brian, for that great introduction. And I first want to clear up any misconception that I am the one putting this sucker together. <laughs> this is a group effort. We are all in this together. Our IRN uh, board is... Uh, definitely a working board and uh, this is our summit and so I'm really excited for what we've put together and what we're able to offer this year. So Brian, if you put that slide deck up one more time, that'd be great. Right. Yep. Now I may say that, that Sue, is, uh, Sue is doing all the work or is uh, putting the whole thing together. We do call her maestro uh, behind the scenes. Uh, <laughs> so she's, she's like Geppetto, she may, she's making it work. So. Um, among other things, yeah. <laughs> All right, so in case you don't know, our summit is uh, March the 29th is our pre-conference day. March 30th and 31st is our full summit. Uh, we are excited to be landing in Orlando this year, so we're going to do the full-on Disney thing. Lots of opportunities to catch some sun, uh, network with people, and really have a great time sharing, learning, connecting transforming and talking about universal design for learning because we know that the UDL summit is where leaders go to learn. So come join us. I just wanted to share a little highlights about what we've got uh, in the calendar. Brian, if you could go to the next slide, that'd be great. So just a look at, uh, in terms of numbers of what we've got available this year, we have, um, two wonderful design labs for you. So for those of you who uh, attended previous summits, you're probably familiar with what design labs are. For those of you who are new to the summit, design labs are a great way to sit elbow to elbow with your colleagues to look at problems of practice, the things in your classroom that aren't going so well, or perhaps uh, struggles that you're having with UDL implementation, and really take it apart and um, spend some time designing and redesigning the work until you come up with practical solutions to put into place. They're really open spaces where you can come and share. You determine what it is you're going to work on um, and bring your colleagues and um, spend some time really digging into universal design for learning and finding solutions. And you know, Sue, what I love, what yeah. I love 
what I love about that design lab concept is you never know who's going to show up. You don't know who's going to pop in, right? So, so you may be working with your colleagues and, and uh, uh, Katie Novak may pop in and you might, you sit down, you have a conversation with Katie Novak about it or or Sue Sue Harden might show up or um, or David Rose might walk in or John Mundorf or all any any of these faces that we kind of know uh, around the UDL world may pop in and you can just sit down and have pretty open conversations with them that's I, I find that to be one of the one of the amazing networking pieces of the design lab. yeah that's a great point Brian and not only problem solving but problem solving with some pretty expert people in the topic very very true um, so this year, once again, we have seven pre-conference, or this actually is brand new this year. We have right. seven pre-conference sessions that we're really excited about. We've got, again, some experts in the UDL field going to share their knowledge with us in an in extended way. We've got Luis Perez and Kathleen McCloskey coming in to talk about personalized learning. You'll find a lot of the IRN and um, CAST uh, members uh, presenting for these pre-conference sessions. So we've got a team doing the introduction to universal design for learning for those of you who are new to UDL. And they'll also be talking about uh, professional development and setting up your professional development with under the UDL principles. We also have a team from the IRN talking about uh, leadership and universal design for learning. Allison Posey from CAST is coming and going to talk about uh, learner variability and literacy. Um, all kinds of great sessions. There's a one a full day pre-conference too on universal design for learning and a low incident student. So really something for everybody. And we're really excited about being able to offer those variety of opportunities this year. So Sue, the, we have seven pre-conferences. How does that work? So I'm assuming that there that most of the sessions are half day sessions or quarter day sessions or something? Yeah, that's right, Brian. Uh, six of them are half day sessions. So you can come and choose one learning opportunity in the morning and something to complement it in the afternoon. We do have one full day session, so it's a real deep dive into the topic of UDL and um, uh, students with significant learning disabilities. That's excellent. I love that idea of being able to have choice too and say this this session for, for half the day and then this session for the rest of the day. It's, Absolutely. It's fantastic. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you're, you're good. Um, I mentioned that this year we also have our interact interactive networking sessions. There's 12 this year. We're going to do it a little bit differently than we have in the past. We're going to um, mix this up with our happy hour. So who knows what will happen then. We've got uh, topics <laughs> range from uh, students with social emotional disabilities and um, how UDL interventions uh, work to support those students, UDL in math classrooms, UDL in higher ed, pre-service teachers, pre-service middle school teachers. So all kinds of really exciting sessions. And I believe, Brian, you're going to offer that in the evening uh, uh, video feed and um, for those who can't attend the conference. You want to tell us about that? Oh, yeah. So uh, I'm super excited. Always stoked to try and do something new. So Mindy, uh, Mindy from CAST and I, Mindy Johnson, uh, and I did a, did a Periscope last year that uh, was well received for UDL chat. So this year we're going to have an open seat uh, Periscope where uh, you never know who's going to stop by, who we're going to see, maybe some of the faces you see on uh, tonight's uh, webinars, maybe some other, uh, uh, some other UDL, uh, UDL rock stars are going to stop by. And we're going to ask you to send in some, uh, some questions, some, uh, some comments, some some uh, fashion sense for some of us, uh, whatever you may want to, whatever you may want to offer up, uh, using that, again that hashtag UDLIRN and we're going to live Periscope or, or, and tweet this thing out. It's, I think it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, so there's something for everybody. Even if you can't make it to Orlando, you can tune in on Wednesday evening and kind of see what's happening at the UDLIRN Summit. Um, we have again this year seven UDL talks. Um, and it, they, these are 18 minutes of, as Brian says, knowledge bombs. So really big, um, impactful conversations about how UDL is shaping the way education looks in the 21st century. We've got some really um, st star-studded folks coming and talking to us. So we've got John Mundorth and Lisa Beth Carey in a session that, um, entitled UDL for the Wizarding World. Who knows? I know it's I'm gonna be awesome. That's so what I'm stoked about this one. That's gonna be good. <laughs> it's it's gonna be a barn burner. That one's gonna be good. 
<laughs> Mindy Johnson's going to come and talk from CAST, and she's going to talk about uh, UDL and social media and how those all fit together and the things you need to be thinking about as you're uh, interacting in the social media world. David Davis, our host from Orlando, uh, will be talking about UDL and systems change. So we've really got some excellent UDL talk uh, titles and speakers, and I think it's going to be, again, uh, one of those kind of mind-blowing moments um, sprinkled throughout the summit. 27 breakout sessions, 12 interactive networking sessions, seven UDL talks, design labs, pre-conferences. I, I haven't talked about the breakout sessions yet. You got to give me one more. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. Get to the breakout <laughs> sessions. I cannot then believe it. Still, my mind is really <laughs> we have what we have ready. So go ahead, I'm please. I'm really excited about the breakout sessions, too. We've got some uh, names that we've had in the past joining us again this year. So we had uh, Elisa Lowry, who did an excellent UDL talk last year, left, left us all speechless. Uh, Dr. Dave Eddyburn coming to talk. Liz Berkwist, Katie Novak is new this year. We're really excited about bringing Katie on. Rachel Brody from New Teacher Academy um, will be, uh, not to new teacher, excuse me, from um, Teacher All uh, will be Good joining night. us. Uh, and, and so we've got some old faces, some new faces, uh, and just some really exciting uh, topics. So we've got universal design for learning and from a parent's perspective and what it means to partner with parents in universal design for learning. We'll be looking again at neuroscience and executive function and how that fits in with, with UDL. We'll look at UDL leadership. Uh, I'm really excited about augmented reality in UDL. That what? would be great. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Check that one out in our skid. Um, we also got global perspectives and um, uh, about UDL and school improvements. So just about something for everybody uh, in our pre-conference and breakout sessions. All right, Brian, countdown. Whew, so let me go through it one more time because I think you left one thing out. So, I did. So seven pre-conference sessions, two design labs, 12 interactive networking sessions, seven UDL on fire uh, talks, and 27 breakout sessions. Am I missing anything else? You might be. All right. What and am I missing? One, one very special, the one and only. Dr. David Rose will be joining us once again All right. to do our final closing fireside chat, the one and only. Phew. And, and I know that you haven't even talked about all of the different networking pieces that we have. Bringing David Rose back when he does his fireside chat, it is one of my favorite favorite times of the summit. I get all warm and cozy on the inside. He hits me directly in the fields. It's wonderful. Um, then, but I don't think you've talked about all the networking that we have going on. And I'm not sure that, I think that there's some other surprises that we haven't even, we haven't even launched. Are there, is, is, do you want me to go, can I go to the next slide? Let's do that. Oh, see, so these are, get ready. Let's do it. So these are some of those can't miss social events that you'll want to put on your calendar as well. I mentioned earlier the networking sessions um, in conjunction with happy hour. So that's happening right in the hotel. No reason to get a cab, no worries about getting home. Just come on down uh, into the uh, conference center, join us for a night of networking and learning. Um, and then Thursday evening, we'll do once again our meet and greet dinner. This is a great opportunity to sit elbow to elbow with your UDL colleagues from across the country, across the world, and really talk about um, the impact that UDL's had on your life and in, in your schools and um, in the lives of students that we're supporting uh, learning for. And this happens again Thursday evening, seven o'clock. And once again, we're gonna be staying in the hotel. So um, no excuses about getting there and <laughs> interacting with everybody and joining in on the fun that happens once the summit hours are, are um, kind of over and we're extending into that evening happy hour time to spend with colleagues time. Now, I, Sue, I know I've said it once before, but I'm, I'm going to say it again. I, to me, the summit is like UDL summer camp. 
right? You come, you hang out, you, it keeps on going. It's a 24 hour gig. You see old faces, you catch up, you meet new friends. You maybe do a little archery if, if it's after hours and gets a little crazy, whatever you want to do, you can do it at the summit. It's a full experience. I'm so, so excited for, for this year's summit in the land of magic, quote unquote. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and it is going to be a good one. I'm, I'm really excited with the lineup that we've got. Uh, great speakers, great topics, just a lot of energy. Uh, and you really don't want to miss it. Absolutely. Hey, Brian Dean, if we're doing archery, I'm going to expect you and Robin Hood tights. Hey, <laughs> now that is not that is not something that you necessarily necessarily want to throw the gauntlet down on. <laughs> I'm not, I will not lie to you. I have not been skipping leg day. So I've been putting it together and you know I got some tights floats floating around. But I do, I will say this, I have my own little surprise for the summit. Uh, you will only be able to see it there. It is a themed suit. You cannot miss it. It will, I think it will be on point. We would expect no less. <laughs> and that so, right there is the price, worth the price of admission. So. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and Jamie, Jamie and I are going to wear matching kilts this year, I thought, right, Jamie? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. All right. <laughs> so, Sue, how do people get there? How do they register? How do they, how do they get it done? Well, that is actually very easy to do. Hop on over to uh, udl-irn.org, and you can uh, link on the very left-hand side of the page. There's a direct link to Summit. Um, there's more information there. You can launch our sketch, read about the sessions I described, and uh, sign right up. Very simple. Take you about mm, three minutes to do it. Yeah, I was poking around there just earlier today. What I love about the sched um, is that you can, I can make my own schedule, right? So I can see everybody that's there and then I can start to see, um, I can start putting together almost kind of like my UDL IRN greatest hits playlist. Absolutely. I want to do. I love it. Find it's, your own professional learning path. Yeah, right. right? And totally UDL, right? Given lots of voice choice where we're going, what we're doing. I love it. So the UDL IRN Summit, folks, you do not want to miss it. March 30th through the 31st, pre-con the day before, uh, seven pre-cons. The numbers are right there, out of, out of this world. This is, uh, you're going to see David Rose there. You're going to see a bunch of people there. It's going to be fantastic. <clears throat> and if you want to know about whether it's worth it, um, there's some wonderful quotes from participants that have come in the last three years, and they just have glowing things to say about it. So if you don't, if you don't believe us, go ahead and read it for yourself from what others have said who have participated. Um, it really is a, a wonderful three days and tons of learning and networking uh, are a result of just being there, being present, and really putting yourself into diving into the UDL world. And affordable, folks, I'm going to tell you the truth, very, very affordable for what you're getting. So hop on over to udlirn.org, check it out, check out the prices, check out the sked, uh, prepare to lay your money down tonight, because it's going to go fast, folks. All right, I'm going to stop sharing the screen, because I want to kick it over to uh, two of our other participants. Thank you so much, Sue, for filling us in on what's going on with the summit. Um, lots of planning there. It is, as you have said, uh, a group effort. Um, I, and the folks that are, are behind, doing the behind the scenes work, they are, uh, in the, I am amazed at the, at, at the energy that they have put into it uh, and how, how amazing it is when they, all the things that they have going on in it. Uh, so in order to, I want to get to our next portion. <clears throat> and we're going to bring a very special guest, uh, Skip Stall out. Uh, and, uh, and Jamie Basham out. Uh, um, I want you guys to go ahead and introduce yourself. Jamie, I think that there's a, there might be something that you can, uh, there might be a title you might be able to throw out there. I don't know. I'm going to fish it out there a little bit. Uh, you, I'm going to leave it to you to do that. So Skip Stall, Jamie Basham. Skip Stall, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing quite well. Thanks, Brian. So uh, my name is Skip and uh, I'm here. <laughs> the, uh, I'm basically these days uh, senior policy analyst at CAST. Uh, one of the founders of CAST, been there forever. I had luxuriant hair when I started. Um, no longer. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so that's me, Jamie. But you, but you make it look good, Skip. I'm not going to yeah. lie. You make it look good. You very put together. Uh, you very statesly, statesmanlike, sir. Very statesmanlike. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> so uh, I'm Jamie Basham, uh, co-founder uh, of the UDL IRN, and 
CEO of the IRN, I guess. And so kind of Ooh. like herding cats at times, thankfully <laughs> also around to help with operations. And, uh, but it's like herding cats as people might have recognized in the earlier part of this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we wanted to kind of share with you today and talk to you about uh, not only what's going on at the summit, but really what's kind of been going on across UDL overall. Um, and so Skip and I are here to kind of actually talk about the emerging partnership that's, that, that has actually begun and continued, I guess, uh, over the last year between the IRN and CAS. Um, and for those who don't know, I'm gonna let Ka like Skip kind of introduce a little bit about who CAS is and what they do. Because there's a lot of people that are coming on board in this conversation that are you know, just kind of getting into UDL and they don't know who the players are. And so we want to give some time to kind of introduce people. But Skip, do you want to just kind of give a kind of a 30,000 foot view of who you guys are and what you guys do? Sure. Um, so CAS started out as the Center for Applied Special Technology, which is where the abbreviation or acronym came from. Uh, we just refer to ourselves as CAS these days. We've been in existence about 35 years. We started as an assistive technology clinic associated with the Children's Hospital just outside of Boston. Um, and we spent a lot of time early on, the five original folks, uh, really applying technology to students with disabilities kind of as a prosthetic. You know, what could we help extend their capabilities using technologies? And as we started to grow, we realized that, um, I remember we got together at one point after we'd been in existence as a clinic for about five years, and we said, well, what is it we really want to do? And somebody said, let's change the world. And everybody went, ha ha. And then we all kind of stopped and said, you know, maybe we should try that. And then somebody else said, yeah, but you know, if we try and change the world one person at a time, we don't have enough people here. So we shifted our focus to trying to change the learning environment to make it more flexible for all students. So at that point, uh, the concept of universal design in built environments, physical spaces, uh, was emerging. And we looked at those seven principles and said, there's some really good stuff here. Uh, but learning is a whole different edu setting. Educational settings are different. School is supposed to be hard. Uh, so a lot of the things that were designed, uh, the, the concepts and factors associated with universal design and built in architectural environments didn't really translate well into learning environments. So we started thinking about a notion of universal design for learning. And how could we put together uh, a set of principles that maybe could guide our work? And that evolved into a set of guidelines and now with uh, the UDL guidelines 2.0, um, we have a set of checkpoints as well. So over the past 30 odd years, 20 odd years, we've been trying to work to refine things. Um, <clears throat> and it's really uh, dependent, our work is dependent upon everybody else in the field as well. Uh, we certainly don't have all the answers. This is an iterative process. Um, just when we think we've solved one problem, another one will arise. Um, so we continue these days, we're about uh, 40 people. We pr predominantly do research and development, uh, professional learning. Um, and we do uh, prototype development with publishers, but also as part of our research. And as Jamie said, um, we've forged a strong relationship with the UDL IRN uh, in the last year. And, and we've been working together really since the inception yeah. of the IRN. In fact, the IRN uh, came out of a meeting uh, with folks at CAS saying that there needs to be a group that kind of really comes together that focuses on implementation. Yeah. And people can read our story. I think we actually have a little bit of it online, but I'd be glad to tell people at the summit if you show up. A bit uh, of things about it. The teaser. Um, <laughs> I'm waiting. But, I'm waiting for the JB uh, memoirs to come out. <laughs> <laughs> so we've uh, we've been working together for the last five years, but really over the last uh, you know year or so, we've been really kind of more closely working together with a number of uh, with a couple of initiatives. One that's really been emerging. I mean, for most people that have been paying attention and are coming new into UDL, they're, they're probably coming into it because of a federal law that was passed, or they heard about it in, in, um, through ESSA or another, or another, or even that, or the National Educational Technology Plan, at least within the US. I mean, there's a growing movement that's just, um, there's a growing movement that's kind of taken on its own, its own life, but a lot of people are coming into it from that sort of 
uh, from those policies and or guidance documents. So that has kind of given us a means to kind of come around the table and say, oh my gosh, so CAST has a mission to change the world. Uh, IRN has kind of the same mission. Let's change the world together. <laughs> yep. um, so you want to talk a little bit more about, uh, about that, Skip? And I know sure. we're going to talk a little bit later on with uh, Brian and Steve as to what, what, how the other ways that we're going on supporting that there. Yeah, so I, I think about a year ago, uh, the IRN reached out to CAST and a number of other folks. And as Jamie said, because of uh, emerging language in uh, US federal statutes, starting with a statutory definition of universal design for learning in the Higher Education Opportunity Act in 2008, and then additional language in a variety of policy documents, and finally in the reauthorization of the Every Student Succeeds Act, ESSA, UDL is mentioned in four different places. Uh, so it, it became clear that people were asking, well, how do I know it when I see it? Uh, we've got, you know, ed tech community vendors who are saying we've got a UDL product. We've got a, 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 rec a strong recommendation in the Every Student Succeeds Act is to incorporate UDL into global literacy at the district level and the state level. So districts are saying, well, how do we do that? What, you know, how do we know that the approach we're taking is a valid one, et cetera? And so it became clear that some sort of verification system uh, was necessary. Uh, verification for instructional practice, verification for products, uh, verification for research. Are we headed in the right direction? Um, and so the IRN uh, certainly should take credit for starting that ball rolling. And uh, sometimes we think it's downhill, sometimes we think it's uphill, but <laughs> the ball is rolling and, and reached out to us and, and everybody. And, and we said, this is, this is right. The time is right to do this. Um, we need to uh, join with the IRN in this effort and put whatever weight we can behind it. Um, and one of the things that uh, I felt strongly about, and, and I think um, everybody else joined in, was the sense of wanting to establish a national mandate, uh, particularly in the field of general ed, not, not just special education. And so what I did was, uh, actually Jamie and I together uh, reached out to the National UDL Task Force, which is a 40 member organization that had formed in 2007 uh, to specifically to get UDL language into federal statute. And um, they were at that point uh, looking for another sense of direction and where to put their energy. And so we explained to them that we felt a need for credentialing and certification for a voluntary transparent verification system for universal design for learning and asked if they'd join in as lead partners. Um, so out of those conversations, uh, we received some initial funding to establish a phase one uh, UDL council, um, phase one being between now and December of 2017. And uh, we asked a number of organizations, Council of Chief State School Officers, Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development, uh, American Federation for Teachers, National Education Association, School Boards Association, as well as dis disability advocacy groups to join together in the council to help initially provide us with advice about how to move forward, but with the vision that this council, as it matures and its work gets more embedded in the actual day-to-day -day activities of the initiative, would emerge into a leadership role and, and provide the effort that the IRN cast and the um, National Task Force were engaged in with the national mandate. And uh, so we were able to um, establish the council. We had two meetings in the fall. We got some marching orders of where to move towards next in terms of developing a draft certification. We're reaching out to various stakeholder groups with a process where we'll be drafting uh, uh, initial certification for ed tech products and one for school districts, and then reaching out to another set of individuals to kind of critique that initial draft, feed it back, and ultimately uh, expose that for public comment that we want to have as much uh, input into those initial decisions as possible. Uh, are we going to get it right the first time? Nah, uh, but that's fine. Uh, we're going to put a stake in the ground and make sure that uh, as many people are as actively involved as want to be and that uh, listen to those folks who are saying, whoa, you may be going in the wrong direction or we think you're going in the right direction and uh, to help guide the movement as we go forward. Yeah, so, so 
I'm sorry, ahead, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around this in, in layman's <laughs> terms, right? So, sure. let you, so, let, so let me spit it back to you, Skip, and, and you tell me if I got it. Uh, and Jamie, you tell me if I got it. Go for what, it. What we're starting to look at is, so there's this, there's this, what sounds like a super awesome council that has been brought together of, of stakeholders that are going to then create certifications from, from building to product to teacher, to school, to where are we going everywhere? Are we so, going, we're going global, we're going worldwide, we're so, going everywhere. <laughs> the long-term goal is to have many certifications. Um, we're, we're, we're done. Done. Go ahead. Well, the notion of both certifications and credentials, right? Yeah. You're working on certifying uh, products and processes, if you will, and credentialing people. Uh, and that and that's the long term the long term goal and I think that's where uh, that's where our partnership has kind of come together and and kind of really focused. But it's also not just our partnerships, the task force, and the work that they've done, and all the other organizations that have become part of the council and working forward with the council to really kind of bring a unifying vision for what this a unifying but. It's kind of an odd thing because we're providing some unified vision, but really providing a platform for, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes, for being able to, de to, to develop a distributed sort of vision so that various voices and, and places and people can be heard on, on what this actually means to them and how so, it Yeah, so Brian, a good example of the council's impact uh, on some of the decisions was we went into the initial council meetings thinking that having some sort of core UDL credential for individuals was a good place to start. The council kind of pushed back at that and said, you know, you're back to changing the world one person at a time if you start there. Um, and we think that you ought to be looking at cert cert certification process for ed tech products, number one, and for school districts. Because if you approach districts, you, you then encapsulate administration, the procurement of instructional materials, instructional practices, teachers, parents, everybody involved at the district level. So the council was, was very good and kind of correcting our direction. And that was exactly what we wanted them to do was one say, you know, no, this is the wrong place to start. Start here. And if you start here, you got 100% support of everybody in the room. And that's what we were able to achieve. And that was really critical to get that support, uh, especially because it was predominantly general education folks and not special education folks. And so you want to have an environment that encompasses all of education and is very responsive to and, and respectful of and and, and addressing the needs of individuals with disabilities. I, so my, really, my, my mind is reeling on this, guys, uh, because this is, this is a game changer in so many ways, right? It's a game changer in the fact that we, we finally have something that is backed by a couple really, uh, like a, a, lo a, a large council of individuals or a large council of organizations that are, that are recognized. So there's yes. validity there. Right. And there's and there's there's something behind that. So there's meat. That's great. And then it's it's answering a question that that has been plaguing UDL for the longest time. Right. Like what is what are some guidelines that this is going to look like and how do we agree to that? Right. And then it's bringing together again, it's bringing together these kind of like these behemoths in the UDL world. So if I'm new to this, I may not see this as this huge landscape changer, but I got to tell you, as somebody that, that's still relatively new to UDL, it, it is, it's blowing my mind at, at the possibilities that are going to happen behind this. This is a, this well, I, I think oh. one of the things it's going to do is it's going to provide the resources. It's going to provide resources for districts that are wanting to advance. Absolutely. And it's going to give, it's going to give the, the curriculum and ed tech communities, the resources to, to advance, uh, products and curricula that are associated and aligned to uh, UDL as a framework. And then, and then overall, again, it gives, gives, I think globally, not even within the US, I think globally it provides a, a means for people to adopt it because that's one of the bigger things we're seeing is not only the growth in the US, but the growth beyond the US. And so providing, providing at least a foundation to set that forward and not make this a US initiative, but to make this really a, a universal initiative yeah. as, as it should be. Yeah. Well, and it's, and it's owned by, it's owned by us. Right. And I don't mean UDL IRN and I don't mean, the network, I mean right? 
I mean, the UDL, the family, like the UDL right. culture that we have, because that's one of the things I love about UDL is that, like, I'm, on, I'm sitting here on a conference call with Jamie and Skip and Brian and these amazing people, not to leave out Steven Sue, of course, uh, but these amazing people <laughs> around UDL, and I've had dinner with them. And we are very much a grassroots organization, and really this symbolizes to me that grassroots organization taking control of it and saying, let us define what this is going to look like as a group. And here's our voice. That's, that's empowering. Yep. Thanks so. for the way. You guys have been doing some work, putting in the work. More to come. <laughs> Even more. <It's> good... <laughs> so, I, so gentlemen, I just want to give you a, a minute if you have any last thoughts on this um, or, or uh, what, if, if, you're, if we have people coming to the summit, can they come up to you? Can they chat about this? Is this yes. secret, super secret? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I have one. Uh, yeah, no secrecy at all. Um, okay. So uh, we're referring to the initiative as the UDL Credentialing and Certification Initiative, UDL CCI, kind of the whole package yeah. council and, and what Brian and Steve will tell you about. Um, but uh, we're putting up a website, which hopefully will be up and available within the next couple of weeks. We have a listserv, a public listserv that we're going to be making available and sending out information about so anybody who's interested there's an email there's going to be an email address associated with that website it's kind of as I said like a public service announcement uh, just detailing the council who's on the council the council charter the guiding principles and um, and then uh, collecting uh, emails and contact information for people who want to become involved in this process because our take on it is uh, the more players at the party the happier we are oh, that's right, right. I That's right. And, and it'll be open for dialogue and conversation, obviously, at the summit. So yeah, absolutely. Um, stay tuned and you'll hear get updates and, and it's going to be a, a great conversation going forward. And that, that, folks, leads us to our next, uh, our next two individuals, our next two guests on, on the January shout out. Um, uh, if your mind isn't already smoking and, I, and, and, and blown, uh, this is going to be this is going to be the final nail. Uh, this is what's going to do it. Uh, so joining us are Steve Nordmark and Brian Wojcik. I'm going to let them introduce themselves as always. Um, but gentlemen, good to see you. Take this thing home. <laughs> Brian, you want to go first? Sure. Uh, my name is Brian Wojcik, and I've been involved with the UDL IRN for um, quite a while. And um, I've had the, uh, in my day job, I, I work at a university in Nebraska. Um, I've had the privilege of working with Steve and a, a variety of different individuals on this uh, project that we're going to be talking about, but I'll let Steve introduce himself. Yeah, hey everybody, it's Steve Nordmark, and I've been with the IRN for, gosh, I guess informally about four or five years, and formally for the last couple, and really excited about everything that's been going on, and in particular, what Brian and I are going to share with you. My background is in educational software development, and this certainly fits that mold, and it's not like the IRN set out to... Uh, to create a new education technology, but there were a lot of amazing factors that took place that just the, the stars aligned and allowed us to pursue this. And we're incredibly excited about the opportunity to support what Skip and Jamie were talking about related to credentialing and certification and using an online platform to do so. So Brian, I think Brian Dean, if you wanna pull up that one slide, I think that'll help Kind of frame it up for folks. I am, I am on it. And while I'm pulling it up, I, I got to be honest with you, uh, uh, Steve. The lighting today uh, on this on this call, you you've done something special. Uh, that you're looking fantastic. You're the maestro of the lights today. I had to I had to say something. You got to share your secrets with uh, with Jamie and I. <laughs> I'm gonna bring it up right now. Here we go. Yeah, so as, uh, as Skip said, we're uh, working on a UDL credential and certification initiative and uh, building an online platform. And uh, you know, one of the amazing things that happened for us is one of our board members, uh, Denise DeCoste, uh, as a relationship uh, through her daughter with uh, the U.S. Green Building Council. And as part of that, we, uh, we had some great conversations with that organization and learned a lot about what they did with their LEED certification 
program. And as we learn more and more about it, we saw tremendous parallels to what we were looking to do around credentialing and certification in UDL and what they had done in the green building industry. And as things turned out, we had a tremendous opportunity to build a similar platform to support UDL. And, uh, and this slide here kind of highlights those components and uh, the major pieces. Brian, maybe you can kind of take it from there. Well, and this platform is, is, uh, has multiple phases to it uh, in its development and we're in one of the earlier phases, um, but we're getting close to the end of that, of, of that particular development phase. The whole point of this platform is really to connect people with information and, uh, and to help them build their understanding about UDL. When we talk with people about uh, UDL, we have a lot of different perspectives on UDL. We have a lot of different pieces of information, but oftentimes people are doing UDL uh, and whatever that means. They're, and they're implementing UDL or trying to implement or trying to learn about UDL very piecemeal. Um, and oftentimes they're uh, working on it um, by themselves. And with this, uh, it allows us to build a space to house uh, a lot of different pieces of information and learning about universal design for learning and connect people to have conversations around this as well. That's really the focus of this first phase is to bring content together and to bring people together to have discussions and to learn about what universal design for learning is and more importantly, how to implement universal design for learning in multiple settings. One of the and interesting things that has happened with all of this is that we've had to think about, well, if we're going to be talking about UDL, then we need to be modeling UDL. And so as we're putting together this platform, we're thinking, how do we design a platform that models each of the principles of universal design for learning so that we are, uh, we are doing what we are preaching? That's no small order, Brian. It's not a small order, and and we find ourselves and going, uh, we find ourselves with interesting challenges every day, uh, from how do we work with content developers to make things more minimal, accessible, but then expand out to represent those uh, uh, those principles of universal you know, design for learning in terms of engagement, multiple means of representation, multiple means of actual expression as we move forward into credentialing and certification as well. Yeah, that's one of the things I've been really excited about with working with the developers recently is some of the interesting designs that they've taken hold of, uh, you know, the concept of, in particular, multiple means of representation, and thought about how can we conveniently demonstrate that for these learning resources and activities that we're going to be putting forth in the platform uh, for great professional learning opportunities for everyone. I mean, regardless of whether you're a classroom teacher, you're a building principal, you're an ed tech developer, you're a higher ed administrator applying it across you know, programs at your university, you're running a teaching program, all those different target audiences are gonna have an opportunity to engage with these resources, but also within the resource presentation, see those multiple means of representation. So it's, it's, been, it's been a wonderful experience in working with the developers to meet that goal of having the platform not just train about UDL, but embody the essence of UDL itself. Well, so when I look at this, uh, when I look at this slide, I, I love what I see. I see that there's a membership system, but then you start making these really great pieces of, there's a networked connections and there's open and global online networked community designed to support understanding community-based platform for content. Seems like this is the centralized place to come for, for all things UDL after a certain fashion. And then on top of it, you're taking this meta moment and you're, and you're modeling it right within the site itself. When, it, when, are, when are we gonna see this thing live? <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, one of the important things that we hear a lot is why would, you know, why do we wanna take content that's in other different areas and, and bring it into this platform? And you know, we're not, our goal is not to 
own all the content. Our goal is to provide a network environment for that content to be intelligently searched and discovered. And even more than that, when you start adding those credentials in there, so as professionals throughout their walks of life, as I said, whether you're you know, an ed tech vendor, you're a classroom teacher, you're a building principal, whatever the case may be, if you're very interested in pursuing that credential, this platform is gonna give you the opportunity to correspondingly connect and associate those credentials with the learning resources that can help you build your competence. So that's one of the major powers that we're gonna have within the platform is making those associated connections. And it's not to say that you have to go through step-by-step step to get a credential, but it provides you that opportunity. And then you can personalize your experience. You can go straight to that credential and demonstrate your understanding, or you can go through and work with two or three or any number of learning resources prior to that. And that network capacity is providing opportunities for others who have worked with those resources to tell you what they thought about them to bookmark them, to, uh, to comment on it, to rate them, as well as sharing them with their other network members and, and friends. And then organizations can be involved with this as well. So we're encouraging a variety of different organizations to participate in this and bring their members to that and provide them an opportunity to customize their experience within the platform as well. Wow, so it's a place to recruit, it's a place to grow, it's, it's, it's um, vetted by, by uh, the community, it's held by the community, it's rated by the community. Whew, like I said, this is no small feat, gentlemen. No, and we're, uh, we're taking it, uh, you know, taking that weight and, and relishing it. We're doing that workout every day and, and loving it. Now, Brian, I cut you off a little bit. It seemed like you had something that you wanted to say. I just wanted to underscore, you know, one of the uh, things that I think is really powerful about this is that uh, the content that's coming into this platform, it's not like, uh, it's not like there's, uh, you know, a couple organizations that are sitting here and defining and dictating all of the content. The content coming into, uh, into the platform is really based upon how is is coming from individuals and organizations that are implementing UDL in a variety of different ways. So, for example, if somebody had worked very uh, very hard at developing UDL at a preschool level, they could be a content generator and take what they have learned and put it into this platform, share it out with others, and engage the community within the platform in discussing and actually developing additional content within that area. And so there's a very nice organic way of bringing that knowledge into the platform, sharing it and cultivating it in, in many different ways. So I, I really like the impact that this is going to have. Yeah, we, what, and to kind of underscore what Brian was just mentioning, it's our strong intent to develop what we're referring to as a content partner program. So it, it, the IRN cast, we're not going to be building all this content. We're going to be developing a content partner program with people across the globe. I mean, I just wow. got an email this morning uh, from someone who's very interested in being in that content partner role uh, who's halfway across the world. So, so the, but these aren't companies necessarily, right? So it's not like those ed tech developers wants to jump in and develop some UDL stuff. No, you know, maybe maybe existing uh, organizations that are doing professional learning uh, in their own country, uh, in their own state. Uh, it may be individuals. It may be folks at the university level who are uh, doing research and uh, are working directly with schools to do implementation. Uh, there's a variety of different uh, aspects. I mean, we've got uh, a lot of nice topics and subtopics uh, that we're building on a taxonomy of, you know, content that we're looking to populate. But that's not to say that we've got all that taxonomy finalized. We are daily figuring out pieces that we need to add to that. And, you know, we've been talking about the summit from the earlier part. One of the great things is we'll be able to showcase the platform 
at the summit and Ooh. strongly encourage all of you to, uh, to register and get a firsthand look. That's, you heard it here first, folks. That's, that's a UDL IRN Network and Learn exclusive. You'll be able to, they're going to debut this, this wonderful platform at the summit. If you're not at the summit, it's like missing, it's like missing the new comic book movie trailer. It's like missing CE, CEC. It's like missing E3. It is, it is that big, folks. We're going to be dropping trailers and, and, and amazing things at that summit. Wow. Gentlemen, I, so this, this has really got me excited because I was, all, I was also wondering where the research portion was coming in because I saw you hitting implementation, right? That's the I and IRN. You're hitting the network and you're honoring the network, which is very important, I think. But then I'm wondering, well, what about the R? And now you're saying, but this platform is open so it, so it bridges research with the network and implementation. This, is, this, this platform is the conduit between those things and they help inform each other. I think that that's, that's now, my, now my head is, my mind is really blown uh, because they, those are huge pieces. Wow, gentlemen, uh, I applaud you for the work and, and everybody that in the IRN and everybody in, in the council and in CAS that are, that are really putting together these big pieces. Um, and then we have this face-to-face -face piece that happens too. So uh, it seems like it's, it's been a pretty big year for, uh, for the IRN, at least in what they're developing. Yeah, I think it's been a big year for UDL overall, and yeah. it's going to continually grow and grow bigger. Um, and with our partnership at CAT, with, that's going out at CAST, and, and the work that's going out at the platform, and of course the summit, which should highlight, kind of highlight the what's going to take place over the next upcoming year. Well, folks, I, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I think we've gone a little bit over, but I do want to thank you all uh, for joining me on this on this uh, call today and, and kind of talking about what's happening behind the scenes and and uh, kind of talking about uh, behind the curtains and what's happening in the wonderful land of of, of IRN, UDL and, and the UDL IRN. Um, I'm going to share the screen one more time because we got to pay some bills before we get out of here. So I got to hit up some some of the sponsor stuff that we have. So please. Remember, UDL chat happens every first and third Wednesday of the month. Um, UDL chat is powerful. Um, you have great moderators like Mindy Johnson. You have Brian Wojcik stops by. You have Sue Harden dropping in. You have Katie uh, Novak dropping in. You have Kim Coy, who will also be at the summit. She's going to be leading uh, the chat on the 18th. Um, we're always talking about very, very uh, up-to-date, very topical things. Um, and so it's about a half hour long. It's from 9 to 9.30 Eastern time. Um, so uh, it happens on Twitter, and it uses the hashtag UDL chat. Make sure that you're a part of that. Again, I'm going to plug that summit because this is this is this is the moment. Um, so uh, March 30th, 31st, pre-conferences. March 29th, we're in Orlando, folks. How even if you even if you don't know anything about UDL and you just happened upon this channel, we're in Orlando. Come on down. Um, it's it is uh, it is. You can find the registration at UDL. Uh, IRN.org. Um, the theme this year is Connect, Learn, Transform, which is what this uh, Network and Learn has been about. How are we connecting? How are we transforming? How are we learning? What are we doing? The summit is the place where UDL leaders come to learn. With that, I want to thank everybody again. I want to thank Steve Nordmark. I want to thank Brian Wojcik. I want to thank Jamie Basham. Uh, I want to thank Sue Harden. Uh, and I want to thank Skip Stahl for stopping by uh, and dropping some knowledge bombs uh, on this UDL IRN. Um, so with that, folks, I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to say thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Uh, see you in February, folks. In February, we got another Network and Learn coming up. So uh, expect, to, expect to see that go out on our website. Thanks, Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Good night. See y'all.